Welcome to We Are Soccer. I'm joined today by Colorado Rapids, Rapids and U.S. men's national team starter, Kellen Acosta. Kellen, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you for, for having me. Awesome. Hey, man, uh, it, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. And I'll be honest, I, I'm really looking forward to the upcoming Gold Cup and seeing uh, the U.S. make a run at another piece of silverware. But I'm still on cloud nine from the Nations League final victory over Mexico. Uh, you and the team were absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and it was such an entertaining game for us fans. What, uh, what was it like playing in that game, man? Yeah, it was definitely uh, pretty crazy. I mean, the game had a bit of it all. Uh, I had goals and, you know, had the chippiness of a, of a big rivalry. Fans throwing things to the VAR decision. Um, you know, it was, uh, I mean, everything you kind of wish for as a fan, a spectator in a final. I mean, maybe not us as players because there was just so much anxiety going on and, what calls going which way scoring you know it was it was a lot though but it was definitely exciting times and obviously it's a it's a lot sweeter when you get to beat your rival in the final absolutely have you played against mexico you, you might not have played in that like level of a game right but have you played against them before and has it been like that chippy is it, it's always chippy right it's always a yeah i mean game. definitely but i think it's a little bit different when you have something at stake and you're playing for some silverware but i think it's also a pride thing and bragging rights and so, I mean, every game is, is a battle and a fight, uh, but this game it meant a little bit more because, like I said, at the end of the day, you want to win. You want to win something and hold up a trophy. And and so that's why it makes it a little bit sweeter. Absolutely. I, I'll be honest. Like we had a group of guys here at my house watching the game and it, it was nuts. You know, that letting a goal in in the first minute um, kind of put a little bit of a sour note on it uh, at the start. But, man, credit to you guys and, and, and the way you guys came back and really got back into that game. Uh, like I said, it's it's been what a month or so now, or whatever it's been since, and, and uh, we're we're still there's uh, us casual fans. We're still talking about it, and we're still kind of going through things. And man, it was so fun to watch. Uh, I can only imagine, you know, like like we were talking about how bad uh, or how interesting and nerve wracking it was for you guys on the field. It had a little bit of everything, which was awesome. Um, so the the Gold Cup roster, it's a it's a little bit different from the uh, the Nations League uh, roster that they had. Um, how are preparations going for the Gold Cup, and uh, what are you guys looking forward to? Is you have a game uh, this Sunday, correct? Correct. Yeah, for me, it's been a little bit different. I just got here yesterday, um, so the the group of guys have been here since Monday. But I showed up late because I play with uh, a game in Colorado mm -hmm. um, on Wednesday. But um, <clears throat> as it's shaping up, I mean, it's it's going to be a great test for all of us. I mean, big game, first game versus Haiti. And I mean, we'll take it game by game, but um, yeah, it's going to be a great test. I mean, some of these guys are newer to the team. So get a taste of the international exposure and the level. And um, it's an opportunity for us to, to lift up another piece of silverware. Absolutely. And so it's uh, yeah, it's going to be competitive. It's going to be great. And I think we're up for the challenge. I mean, um, right here, right now in Kansas city, I would say it's the coldest place in the world. Uh, pretty humid. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, I mean, that's part of it. You, you got to just adapt to your surroundings and, and each opponent brings different challenges for all of us. And, um, we got to just take a game at a time. I think if we just kind of just, um, love our focus for each game. Um, I think, uh, we will be able to get the results that we want. Is it going to be tough kind of assimilating with that new group that, um, you know, some of the guys who haven't been on the national team roster before, or do you think it should be fairly easy uh, to, to get used to it and jump right in and, um, you know, you think you guys will mesh pretty quickly? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's a combination of both. Obviously, um, we're not always with each other, but I think when you're when you play with good players, it helps each and one of us excel. And so like, I'm always looking forward to being part of the group and and it's an opportunity for, all, for everyone to kind of just step up and be ready. I know everyone's eager to, to you know, to rep the crest and get out there. So I think uh, we're going to feed off each other's energy and we hope to, to build chemistry right away. Is it is it different from playing in a, in a regular like uh, Colorado Rapids game, uh, playing for for your country, repping that that that, you know, that that badge on the chest? Because it's we, we're seeing a lot, obviously, uh, in the Euros at the moment and what it means to a lot of those players. But I can only imagine what it really feels like to be able to play at the highest level uh, here in America and play. Yeah, it's, it's got it's got to feel awesome, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think the, the jersey is a little bit heavier when you get to rep the crest and it's a, it's a pride thing. You're not only playing for the name on their back, but you're playing for a, the whole country. And you want to represent them well. So for, for us, it's it's a matter of battling and fighting and wearing the shirt with pride and, and you know, making most of each opportunity we're on the field. And for me, it's always exciting to, to kind of be back in the fold, be back with the team and not even being on the team, but stepping onto the field and making a difference and contributing 
um, each and every way that I can, whatever position or role I might play. Um, but for me, yeah, it's always a special feeling to, to, to wear the crest. Is it, is it unique coming into those camps? Because you've got guys who, you know, you got uh, Serginio Dest, McKinney, uh, Polisic. Is it unique coming into those camps and seeing how they've grown since the last time you saw them and, and then seeing how they kind of prepare? Are you, are you kind of watching them a little bit? And, and not, not that they're playing at a better level, but uh, they do things differently in different countries. So do you kind of watch a little bit and try to pick up some things as they probably do from you as well? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, definitely great, uh, you know, seeing these guys again and see their progressions over the years and, and seeing how, how far they've come and where they're at now. I mean, guys, I mean, these guys have won, you know, numerous trophies for their club. Christian, the biggest one with Champions League. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's always great kind of just be, you know, around those guys and feeding off their energy and, and learning from their experiences and kind of just take that into account and try to uh, apply what they learned to my game and, and move forward and hopefully they can learn a, a few things from me as well, uh, whatever that may be. But, um, but yeah, but it's definitely, it's great being around those guys and seeing, um, you know, their different obstacles and different challenges that they've faced and kind of, um, you know, hear all the adversity that they have and how they've kind of overcame it. I mean, uh, you know, everyone has their own situations sure. and um, you, you know, we only see, you know, part of it, but obviously, knowing these guys on a personal level is, is, is huge and um, feeling connected with them is, is a great feeling. And I think <clears throat> having that overall bond uh, not only helps us off the field, but on the field. And so it, no, it's just been great being around those guys and also just playing with them. I mean, they're all special players for sure. Yep. Special players. And they all seem like good dudes as well. So it, it's, I think, man, the, the crop of U S players that are, that are here today, man, you guys are just phenomenal. And, there's a lot of big competitions coming up in the next two, three, four or five years that, that we, you know, we're hoping to see you guys kind of progress towards. Um, so hopefully you guys can keep bonding, keep doing what you're doing. It's great to watch. Um, I want to ask you about your, uh, you know, playing at the Colorado Rapids, obviously been there a couple of years now. I think you're, I was reading earlier that um, it's a little bit of a, you're coming into the, the third year of your contract there and then they have an option to pick up another one or two. Um, you think they'll pick it up and you look, you like playing in Colorado. How's that going, man? Yeah, it's definitely been going well. I mean, this year has been better than, than the last, uh, the, the previous years. Uh, we struggled a bit, but this year has been, you know, pretty positive thus far. I mean, we're only halfway through the season. So obviously got another half to go, um, you know, anything can happen. But um, yeah, I mean, my experience here has been good. Uh, obviously a lot of adversity that kind of had to overcome, um, but that's part of the game. I mean, things happen obstacles happen and it's just how you you know take it on and embrace it and move forward from it um but yeah I mean like you said I mean I'm you know kind of winding down my contract with Colorado I mean obviously it's a great place to live Denver's not not a bad area it's a little bit um you know it's not as flat as Texas but uh it's, it's beautiful the weather's nice the people are good can't complain but I mean overall on the soccer side my dream is always to be in Europe and I'm hoping to achieve that dream one day and hopefully I mean if it's this year it's this year if it's next year it's next year but that's something I have my sights on and um we'll just see how it goes I just kind of just take it practice by practice game by game and kind of just focusing on the now rather than worrying too much about the future Sure. Yeah. You kind of answered my next question of is, do you have any aspirations of, of heading over to Europe? You know, like uh, the example of Daryl DK going on loan and playing over there for a couple of months. And now there seems to be a lot of interest around him. Uh, people, you know, Barnsley and other teams looking to purchase him. So uh, that's that's one of the goals you have is to head over in Europe and play at some of those levels, huh? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, you see guys like that. I mean, it's definitely inspiring. I mean, guys that play in the MLS and having opportunities to, to go to Europe, like the Paul Ariolas, Jordan Morris, Daryl DK, they went on loan per se, but a little bit different. But then just being with the last group of guys in, in Nations League, it kind of pushes me even more that, you know, I'm practicing with them each and every day. And I'm like, wow, like I can play at this level. I mean, I, I need to, you know, further my growth as a player. And I think um, having that challenge in a European environment will, will help me on the field also and at a maturity level off the field. Cause I know they've made a lot of sacrifices um, along the way. I mean, they're young guys, um, you know, how to lead their family and friends and, and to embrace on their journey. And I think it's definitely inspiring for me, even despite being older than them. I mean, these guys, you know, a few years younger than me, inspiring me at my age. And, and that's part of it. And I think, I think having been in that environment will definitely help me grow and, and I think for a competitive standpoint for the national team, I think more and more guys that can be in Europe will, will help, you know, further grow our team and help our team be more and more competitive and be that, um, that wrecking force that we want to be in the world.
Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, you, you, you might, you might be a few years older than those guys, but you're still, uh, you're still fairly young. So hopefully, hopefully that comes about and we can see you in Europe and playing for one of those teams, you know, um, you did, you have mentioned that, uh, you know, you grew up in Texas and played there. Um, you know, what was that like? Cause I, you went straight, uh, into the, uh, the, the FC Dallas Academy right there. And, uh, what was that, what was that like? And, um, you know, was that the, the, the path that you chose there? You think it worked out well? Yeah, it definitely did. I mean, it worked out for me. Everyone has their own, you know, circumstances and journey, but that was the way that I came about and Academy kind of shaped me to, to who I am today. I mean, I, I signed at 16, made my debut at like 17. And yeah, I mean, the, the Academy kind of was an environment that made me as pro ready as I could be. That It made the transition super seamless because I mean, it, it was basically for me was practicing on one field and moving to the next field. Sure. And so, I mean, credit to, to the FC Dallas system. I mean, we produce numerous, numerous of, uh, of products and, um, and I can only hope for, for more in the future. But yeah, but that, but I think I wouldn't change anything. I think that's, that's, uh, that's how I came about. Obviously, I mean, the only thing I would change is maybe some of my performances back in the past. But overall, I mean, that, the, that experience with the Academy it, it has really shaped me. Nice. So we have on, uh, on our show, we are soccer. We had a lot of uh, 10, 11, 12 year olds to kind of watch and try to pick up things. If, if there's one piece of advice you could give to, you know, that 10 or 11 year old kid um, who, who's looking to, to emulate you and be a starter on the U S men's national team one day, what's a piece of advice you can kind of pass along to that child? Yeah. So, I mean, if, if, if this is something you want to do in the future, the game takes sacrifices. Like for me, um, I didn't really get to enjoy stuff that some of my, my friends were doing in school. Like I, I never did. I didn't go to homecoming. I didn't go to prom. I do like the high school parties, the, you know, the Friday night lights football games. And it's huge in Texas. And I didn't really get to experience that. And then whether it's, you know, eating healthier, going to sleep earlier. Um, those are kind of sacrifices that I've made um, to, to get where I am today. And I think I, I still wouldn't change it for the world. Um, obviously some people kind of don't really think too much about that. Um, as they're playing because sometimes it, it doesn't really affect them as much but in the long run it, it will definitely catch up to you but i i think if, if this is something you want to do in the future i think i think it's obviously i can just be cliche is work hard you know that kind of stuff obviously that goes hand in hand but i think making sacrifices go a long way yep yep i mean that that's it right there i think uh guys who've gotten to your level um there's sacrifices to be made you know there's like you, yeah, said, you can use the, the other guys in europe you know they yeah. they go to europe at 15 16 years old leave everyone behind yeah. stay with the host family yep. and go to a country they don't even know the language Just eating food they don't normally eat i mean that that if that doesn't you know tell you um all you need to know then i don't i don't know what else to say to you so um yeah i mean that's 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 about the game obviously some guys are just born with talent but obviously um, you know, talent, you, talent can only go so far. I mean, you got to have the work ethic as well. And, uh, I mean, those guys have work ethic for me. Um, I just use the model every day is you could and may be more talented than me, but you're not gonna work harder than me. And that's something that was funny. It actually comes from a wise old man that I know, Aaron Berg, who <laughs> kind of stresses that a lot, <laughs> um, that, yeah, no matter what you may think you you've done in the past or, whatever you got to outwork me today and i kind of use that mindset and kind of just everything that i do really um can i'm a competitive guy i want to even if we're playing cards i want to beat you it doesn't matter video games cards you know whatever it is and having that competitive mindset kind of pushed me to where i'm at today as well for sure and yeah man you mentioned aaron bird obviously with next level training he I, i've been out to watch a lot of his training sessions and, and it's no joke he is competitive and he he wants competitiveness in and every single training session he's doing, whether it's just dribbling or passing or a 3v3 game, man, there is no letdown. He, there is competitiveness all over the field. It's something he trains into people if they don't have it. So, yeah, man, it's, uh, if, if you've got that competitive nature, and I know you do, uh, that's one of the reasons you've gotten to where you are along with those sacrifices because it's built in, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he always pushed me because I can't let this guy next to me outwork me. So when, when he jumps into drills and stuff, I'm like, gosh, 
and I see him, I'm looking over to him and he's not really huffing or puffing. I'm like, <laughs> gotta just suck it up and just go out there. So, uh, yeah, he pushes me, especially when I, when I go up to Michigan, um, every off season. So I always look forward to it because it's, he's a competitive guy and, um, he pushes me, I push him. So it goes kind of hand in hand. So it's a, it's a nice relationship that we have. Yeah, for sure. Well, next time you're in Michigan, man, I'll have to stop by and we'll have to chat and, uh, yeah, I have to do this in person because, yeah, it'd be great to come out and watch you play with uh, play on the field with Aaron and, and do some training because, man, he, uh, you know, I, like you said, he come, you come up here several times a year to Michigan and um, Michigan's a beautiful place, so I can see why, but it's obviously because of Aaron and next level training. Yeah, for, I mean, it's not because of the winter because every time I go there, it's freezing <laughs> and it's cold, so it's got to be, it's got to be bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Well, listen, man, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I really appreciate you stopping by and chatting with me and We Are Soccer. Um, listen, stay healthy. We want to keep seeing you perform, man. We want to keep you seeing you on the field for not only the Colorado Rapids, but also the U.S. men's national team. And uh, for everybody who's watching this, make sure you watch uh, the upcoming Gold Cup games. Uh, this upcoming Sunday, uh, Kellen and the boys are going to be taking on Haiti. So uh, good luck, Kellen. Really appreciate the time, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, buddy. Take care. Cheers.